Hello. In this video, we are going to calculate the energies of the pi conjugated system in cyclopentadiene using the Huckel method. Recall that cyclopentadiene is a five-membered cyclic system. Using the Huckel formalism, we know that we have to solve a particular secular determinant equation which has the following terms. and we set this equal to zero. Also recall that to aid our solution, we want to make a particular assumption, and that assumption is to let x equal the quantity alpha minus the energy divided by beta. If we make that particular substitution, our secular determinant becomes the following. we set this equal to zero. Our next step is to expand this five by five determinant using minors. Our first coefficient is going to be the x, and then it multiplies the determinant we get by removing the first row and the first column. So that gives the following. For our next coefficient, we use the 1. And recall that we alternate signs so that we need a minus 1 for this particular term. And again, we get the determinant that removed the second row and the first column. The next two coefficients are zeros, so we can effectively ignore those because anything times zero equals zero. And our last coefficient is a one. So notice positive, negative, positive, negative, positive. So the coefficient is going to be a positive one. And we get the determinant that we get by removing the fifth row and the first column. And now we have broken it down into a series of four by four determinants. Next, to evaluate the 4x4 four four determinants, we have to expand them as a series of 3x3 three three determinants, which gives the following terms. So again, x is going to be the first coefficient, and it multiplies the 3x3 three three determinant we get by removing the first row and the first row in the first column. Our second coefficient is going to be a minus 1, because it's the second coefficient. And we color-coded the 
expansion in purple because it corresponds to this 4x4 determinant. For the next 4x4 determinant, we will show that in blue. Our first coefficient is going to be a positive one. And our second coefficient is going to be a minus one. And then we've shown our expansion in blue. Last but not least, we need to evaluate the four by four determinant here. Our first coefficient again is going to be a one. And our second coefficient can go across the top since we have fewer non-zero entries. And our last coefficient is going to be a minus one, plus, minus, plus, minus. So we have a minus one there. And now we have expanded the red four by four determinant as a series of red three by three determinants. Next, we can use the distributive law to distribute the coefficients in front over the terms after them. So this gives us x squared times x1, 0, 1, x1, 0, 1, x, minus x times the second 3 by 3 determinant. And we've showed those in purple. Now for the blue terms, you want to distribute the minus 1. So that gives us And now a minus 1 times a minus 1 is a plus 1. So we get a plus 1 coefficient. And then, last, last but not least, we want to distribute the positive one over the coefficients for the last material here. We get plus one times one zero zero one zero one x one, and then one times minus one is a minus one x one zero one x one. 0, 1, x. And recall that this is all equal to 0. Next, we expand the 3 by 3 determinants as a linear combination of 2 by 2 matrices, which gives the following terms. Our first coefficient is going to be x. Our second coefficient is a 1, it's a minus 1, because we alternate positive and negative. And then we want to do the same for the two 3 by 3 determinants in blue. Sure that we expand this one also. The only coefficient we need here is one because we can go across the top. And that simplifies our work a bit. Now for the blue terms, we have a minus one. And now we want to expand along the first column, and our first coefficient is x.
our second coefficient is going to be a minus 1. Now again, for this term, uh, so we can go across the top, we only have one non-zero entry, and that's a 1. So that's our coefficient is going to be a positive 1. And then those are the terms that arise from the blue 3 by 3 determinants. And last but not least, we want to expand the red 3 by 3 determinants. Our coefficient is a 1. Essentially, we're going to expand across the top because we only have one non-zero entry there. Now, our coefficient here is a minus 1. Our first coefficient is going to be an x. And our second coefficient is a minus 1, because we alternate positive and negative. And now we have expanded the 3 by 3 determinants in red as a series of 2 by 2 determinants. Since we can solve 2 by 2 determinants uh, directly, we can now begin to combine terms squared x times x squared minus 1 minus x minus x times x squared minus 1. So that's the simplification for the purple terms. The blue terms equal minus x squared minus 1 minus x plus 1. And now for the terms in red, we have we combine all those terms, what do we get? Well, we get x to the fifth power minus 5x cubed plus 5x plus 2, and this is all equal to 0. We are going to want to solve for x and then use that to determine the energies of our pi conjugated system. We notice that the units term in our polynomial is a plus 2, so we can apply the rational roots theorem that suggests that things such as plus 2 or minus 2, plus 1 or minus 1 are possible roots of the system. So let's try minus 2 and then use a technique known as synthetic division. So our coefficients are going to be 1. Notice that we have no power x to the fourth, so we need a coefficient of 0. Our coefficient for x cubed is minus 5. We have no quadratic x squared power, so we need a coefficient of 0. The linear term is a plus 5, and our constant term is a plus 2. Again, we bring down a 1. Minus 2 times 1 is minus 2. We add down the column to get a minus 2. Minus 2 times minus 2 is a plus 4. Minus 5 plus 4 is minus 1. Minus 2 times minus 1 is a plus 2. 0 plus 2 is 2. Minus 2 times 2 is minus 4. Plus 1 minus 2 times 1 is minus 2. And we get a remainder of 0, which tells us that minus 2 is a root of the polynomial. So this tells us that we can factor this particular polynomial as x plus 2. And then these are the coefficients of the remaining polynomial, that's fourth order, so we have x to the fourth minus 2x cubed minus x squared plus 2x plus 1, and we see that this is equal to 0.
This gives the following energies for our system. The ground state, we have an energy equal to alpha plus 2 beta. Then we have a doubly degenerate state, which is alpha plus 1 plus square root of 5 over 2 times beta. Last but not least, we have a doubly degenerate pair of states, alpha plus 1 minus the square root of 5 over 2 times beta. Thank you very much for your attention. Have a good one.